Now, less than two weeks to go before that crucial U.S. election for the White House and pressure really is on for the candidates to appeal to voters in the so-called battleground states, states that could be won by either Kamala Harris or Donald Trump, which are seen as absolutely critical for victory. Let's uh, just take a look now from today's battleground tracker. Donald Trump is marginally ahead in four of the seven swing states, but there's almost nothing in it. Really is on a knife edge. Just 2% in Arizona, where he has the largest lead over Harris. But uh, what are the issues that voters in this crucial, these crucial states are focused on? Well, we're going to try and work that out now. We're joined by two people who are on the front lines of the issues affecting voters. Talk show hosts, Sherwin Hughes from Milwaukee and Vince Coakley from Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, thank you both indeed for being with us. Sherwin, maybe to you first of all, thank what you. are you hearing from the voters and what do you make of what uh, their message is? Who do you think is going to be elected where you are? when it comes to the polling day on November the 5th? I personally believe that Kamala Harris is going to be successful because of the myriad of issues that we are facing as a nation right now. Character matters to the American people. And Donald Trump has shown us time and time again that he does not have the personality nor the traits that we feel represent us well. And then there's the entire policy discussion where he is just so incredibly off base on the issues that impact real Americans. He is an out-of-touch businessman with 34 felonies on his record. He's an adjudicated rapist. He is not someone that we want representing us, and I think ultimately that's what's going to shine through, and Kamala Harris has the advantage on all of those fronts. OK, and Vince Coakley, uh, you've got a, a talk show phone in every weekday in North Carolina. What, what, what are your listeners telling you? Well, I can certainly tell you uh, they have a very different perspective here because the concerns are about what drives most of these campaigns nationally, especially, which is it's the economy, stupid. You've got to come back to the bread and butter issues. The fact of the matter is inflation's out of control, the costs of food, of gas, of energy, and people want change. And one of the things that Kamala Harris has not been able to demonstrate during this time that she's been running is that she's the change candidate. We have yet to hear a real set of ideas or policies that will reverse the course that we've been on. And she was asked directly the question, uh, what would you do that's different from Joe Biden? She couldn't think of anything. She says she's not Joe Biden, but People want change. They, they're desperate for changes so they can afford homes, so they can afford their groceries, so they can afford their gasoline. And most of the people, um, that's what they're talking about. That's what they're interested in. They want secure borders. They don't want people coming into the country illegally and taking jobs away from Americans and taking resources away from Americans. And it's funny because I think as I talk with people who call into my show, the people who are the Kamala supporters, they're very thin on things that she can do. They have plenty of things they can say in complaints about Donald Trump. Mm. So I think at the end of the day, people are going to think they're going to reminisce back on what it was like during the Trump presidency before COVID. And that may very well carry the day on election. OK, let, let's put some of that back to Sherwin Hughes, who's in Milwaukee. And is that a valid point that, that Kamala Harris... Um, is part of the Biden administration, the economy? Well, we've got high inflation. We know that. A lot of voters don't like the way prices are at the moment. And she has to defend that record. She's not a change candidate, as it were. A lot of this are just, you're hearing tropes and talking points from the right. The economy is doing strong. We've created 16 million jobs in this country since Joe Biden took office. Inflation is now at 2.4%, which is pretty much what it was at pre-pandemic levels. What we're seeing is corporate price gouging. That is why prices are so high, and Kamala Harris even has a plan to tackle that. 
The Pew Research Center just came out with a survey that said the overwhelming majority of people from both parties know that immigrants, legal or illegal, are not taking jobs that Americans want. There's a reason that Donald Trump does not want people from other countries here. And I think that reason is pretty obvious. And yes, maybe he does represent change, but the kind of change that Donald Trump represents is not what Americans want. Donald Trump was recently uh, caught talking about praising Adolf Hitler. While that has changed, it's not something that most Americans welcome. Vince Coakley, I mean, Donald Trump um, has been accused of being a threat to democracy. Yeah, it's really funny because I think the louder these accusations become, uh, I think this really points out the desperation, desperation of the Kamala Harris campaign because it's really all they've got. Um, I, I would say in response, uh, with all due respect to this issue of price gouging, the only people who are price gouging are people in our federal government because they continue to spend and to overspend. We have a debt that is at $35 trillion with no pathway to get that situation under control. This is why we have inflation, because we have a government that is overspit, and there's no plan to reel that back. Now, about Donald Trump, I'm not here as a defender of his, and I think it's funny that, you know, that's what, unfortunately, the Harris campaign, they, that's all they've got. Donald Trump has a demonstrated record of record employment for black Americans, economic advancement for black Americans and Hispanics and others really across the board. And the truth of the matter is that the jobs that have been recovered under this administration yeah. are jobs that were, it was based. Oh, I think we've just lost your line, but let's put some of that to Sherwin Hughes, who's in Milwaukee. Um, let's just well, actually, let's just put aside the politics for a moment and talk about this as a race, which, as I was saying at the very beginning, is on a knife edge. It really is too close to call. I know that's a bit of a cliche, but I don't think anyone can actually predict this with any certainty. I mean, tell me if I'm wrong. Can you predict this? I cannot, but I think that the winds are blowing in the right direction. And there's an overarching issue in this election, unlike any other we have seen in America in the last 50 years. And it's a Supreme Court decision called Roe versus Wade. Women in the United States of America no longer have federal constitutional protections to have body autonomy and to make their own health care decisions. There's a number of women who have voted for Donald Trump and have voted for Republicans probably for generations that are no longer going to support the Republican Party. Even okay. in so-called red states where abortion was on a, a ballot referendum, it has failed and women want their health care decisions back. And Kamala Harris represents that and so okay. would a Democrat. OK, thank you. Thank you, Sherwin. Uh, just a last word to Vince Coakley. I, I was I think your camera has gone a bit crazy, but I just want to ask you, putting trying to put politics aside for a second or at least your political point of view. Do you the, I mean, how this race is so close, isn't it? Can you predict it with any certainty? I would make a prediction here. What I would say, though, is just based on what I'm hearing, uh, this has just been the past week. It seems like there's been a shift that's taken place among the people uh, who are political analysts. And this is not right wingers. Uh, these are mainstream people are looking at this. There's a sense that there's been a shift in this race and that people have gotten to hear. It seems like the more they hear of Kamala Harris, the more they are drifting toward Donald Trump. And the polls seem, seem to be shifting his way. Uh, I heard one particular analyst, very high profile analyst, who said this. He said, if early voting is an indication, like one million people have already voted here in North Carolina, uh, if these early voting numbers that they're seeing, if they prove to be correct, he's confident Donald Trump is going to be declared the winner on Election Day. We and will, maybe even before the election starts. We will see soon enough, one way or another. Vince Coakley, thank you so much for being with us, host of The Vince Coakley Show thank you. on WPBT Radio Charlotte. And also thanks to Sherwin Hughes, host of The Truth with Sherwin Hughes on 101.7 The Truth. Really good to have you both with us. And we're going to be uh, following you. the election race, of course, for the next uh, couple of weeks and waiting with bated breath for the results. Still to come here on The World Today.